Hey there, my name is Emma and welcome to my channel. I make videos on art, upcycling, and DIYs, so if that interests you, feel free to subscribe. So today I'm trying out a new clay product that I've been eyeing for literally years. It is Aves Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part clay compound that is air dry. And supposedly, when you mix it together and then you stick it on something, it air dries and then it also sticks to the surface that it has dried on. It's supposed to be super strong stuff and I've been wanting to get it for so long. Also, this video is not sponsored at all. I bought this myself and the reason I hadn't bought it for as long as I'd been admiring it, it's because it's a little bit pricey. These go for like 30 to $35, which isn't horrible, but I normally work with polymer clay, which you can get like a pound for $20 on Amazon. So this seems a little pricey to me, but it has a whole host of things that it can do that polymer clay can't. So I finally bit the bullet and purchased it. I'm super excited to review it for you and let you know what I think. I learned so much in the process of making this upcycle and I'll tell you all of my thoughts, the pros, the cons on this clay at the end of this video. So if you wanna see kind of my overall thoughts and my struggles and the things that I thought were amazing, Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll show that kind of in a little bit more detail. But without further ado, this is what I created with this air dry clay. Before we get started, let me show you the before. It's a really cute plant stand slash mirror on its own, but I just thought it was the perfect base to use this product on. And I got it from Goodwill for $5.99, so it's a steal. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the mirror, and don't mind my sweaty hands. I'm just removing the mirror because I don't want you staring at me as I do this, so there's that. So I just got an iPad, <laughs> if you could tell. I am so excited to use it. So I'm planning on doing kind of a bird in this top corner and then two butterflies. I'll probably do different types of butterflies and then some like trees. I think I'm going to paint it all brown. I really don't like this tone of brown. It's a little bit too yellowy for me, but we'll see. Maybe I'll give the whole thing a wash. I don't know, but this right now is the plan for it. The first thing I did as per the instructions is put on some gloves before mixing. I was kind of surprised because when I opened it, this top part was kind of open, so I wasn't sure if it was supposed to look like that, but I just rolled with it anyway. Not sure what exactly tool I'm supposed to be using, so I just used this little spatula that I got with my Cricut, and let me tell you, this stuff is hard. It is not easy to pull out of there, and I just wiped the tool off in between. I know it says to use a different tool, but sometimes you gotta break the rules. And I just eyeballed this. I didn't weigh it, maybe you should, but it turned out fine for me. I mixed it for two minutes, and let me tell you, it was a workout, but finally I had my nice little mixed ball, and I let it sit for five minutes. After the five minutes was up, I just went in with my bare hands and tried to warm up little pieces of it. I started rolling it out just on the mirror because I didn't have a good flat surface to work with, but I eventually set one up, don't mind my head. I rolled it out and then I used an X-Acto knife to cut it off. I could have probably taken off the shelf part, but you know, this is how I ended up doing it. I rolled an even bigger piece, and the key here is to use some water after you've put your shapes down, and that's what's gonna help you carve into it. It was kind of sticky and hard to make indents in if it wasn't wet, so kind of lay it where you want it, get it wet, use your fingers, um, but I will warn you, it is very sticky. In this shot in particular, you can see it's just like sticking to my fingers, especially with small details, so that's definitely something to be aware of. I tried to make the transition between the bottom and the top branch as seamless as possible, and I just kept going at it with this little carving tool that I think I got from the Dollar Tree. I wanted the design, which was pre-planned on my iPad, very fancy, to kind of go up from the middle and have a V. And this clay, I will say, joined together pretty well. I didn't have any issues with that. But here's another example, making the leaves of it just being super sticky and just like floppy doppy doppy. So just be aware of that. This was after my first round. This is what that whole little ball of clay was able to create. And at this point, I was ready to make my details, so I got more of it. Because this thing has, I didn't mention this before, this thing has about 
one to three hours ish dry time so you don't want to mix all of it at once you can't unmix it so this was kind of my like round two of mixing where i added more leaves and then i was theoretically going to make the bird and the butterflies but you know this is me learning i was very much learning uh, i loved how the leaves turned out but watch watch me try to make this bird this i, I wanted to make it off of the mirror first because I wasn't even sure if this was something that I could sculpt. It's just, this clay is very sticky. I think it's going to be great for some things, but I'm so used to polymer clay and it was so sticky. And um, the other thing was if you created it on one surface, like for example, this piece of plastic and tried to move it, it just was like completely stuck to the plastic. So I wanted to do almost like a little sketch of it, a little test run on the plastic before I moved it. And I realized, okay, yes, I can make this shape. It's going to be possible because I didn't want to stick it on there and I have it bond with the layers underneath and then ruin them because this is a very, very hard drying clay. Once I was relatively happy with the shape, I was able to add some details with this other tool that I think is just from Cricut. You can use whatever you have, like a toothpick, anything you want, and be sure to wet it a little bit before you get started. And then I added the eye. I didn't add an eye on the backside, but you're not really gonna see that. And this is everything, all the details once it's done. Obviously, the butterflies got cut. Sometimes something's gonna get cut. And it's floppy, it's also floppy. So I added some wire underneath, some of the parts that went on the edges to kind of hold them up as they dried. And then let's see it the next morning. So I let everything dry overnight. It looks almost exactly the same. I would say it's a little bit less shiny and I was able to easily remove the wire parts. And let me tell you, this thing is solid. These pieces are not going anywhere. So for the painting, I did decide to keep it a wood grain. So I poured out some colors. I mainly use like an orange, a brown, um, eventually a black, and then this yellowy color. Mix those up and it's, it's a very orange undertone. So I was going with the lightest colors first, painted that several coats on all of the gray because you want to cover that gray up let it dry, did more coats, and I just tried to be really, really careful with the edges, but if I messed up, I took a, just a plain wet brush and wiped it off of the wood and the cleanup was super easy, so don't worry about that. Once I was happy with the base coat, I mixed some brown and black, and this is essentially going to go into all of the nooks and crannies. So I'm thickly using my brush to apply it to any of the wood and the bird, and then I'm just using my finger to smooth off kind of the top part, and that will leave the dark brown in any of the little holes. And now we are ready for the final reveal. This thing turned out so cool, and I feel like videos don't even do it justice. I potentially say that in every video, but I am so serious with this. It's so cool in person. All of the details are so intricate, and it's just really interesting to look at. I am so happy with how it turned out. My overall main takeaway is that this clay was super cool and I would definitely buy it again. It dried super, super hard and it wasn't that hard to work with. I struggled a little bit, but I think if you use it for the right thing, it's an amazing product. You may have noticed that I didn't end up doing the butterflies. I felt like they were too thin and the clay was just like too floppy. I think at that point I had already been working for about an hour on the leaves and the bird. So I was, I was stressed because this clay only has about one to three, I think three hours is pushing it, hours of dry time. So it was already getting kind of hard to work with and I was so stressed. And I think if I had prepped accordingly and made like a wire structure for the butterflies, it would have been possible to do, but I just wasn't prepared enough. So I decided to use that clay on something else because I was definitely stressed at this point. And also I think the fact that I have moist hands <laughs> did not help because this clay is very activated by water so if you're stressed and sweating like i was it was like not helping the stickiness situation again this clay is meant for certain things and i don't think it's meant for what i'm normally used to creating with polymer clay but making the branches was so easy and even the bird once i like figured out how i wanted to structure it was not that difficult, like creating texture, super, super easy, just adding a little bit of water, but it is very sticky. And I don't think the fact that 
you know, I, I have sweaty hands. I don't think that helps. But also, as I said before, I think this clay really needs kind of like a structure underneath it. Normally with polymer clay, I kind of fix that problem by adding foil to create, you know, whatever shape I want it to stay at, and then I bake it. This one definitely needs some sort of wire or something on the inside, which is not a bad thing. I just didn't plan for that. I did want to show you what I used for the extra clay. This is like a little lamp that I'm gonna clean up and turn into a candle holder, or it was a lamp, and I'm gonna turn it into a candle holder. And with the extra clay, I kind of added it to the top. This is just like a giant hole that goes all the way down because it was a lamp. And I smoothed it out at the top, and even in the parts that are like super, super thin, I don't know, like see that, it is on there and it's not going anywhere. So I think stuff like this is an even better purpose for this clay uh, because this is like, this is rock hard and it's staying really well and I think it's gonna make a great candle holder slash I don't know candelabra maybe if I built some like wire and I don't know messed around with it but I did want to show you this because it it turned out so well and so hard and it's like created a structure for this thing that I couldn't alter the structure in another way, if that makes sense. So it was a very easy way to alter this like solid object that I wouldn't necessarily know how to alter otherwise. So that's definitely a really cool thing that it can do. I think you could probably bake this, but I wouldn't necessarily want to because it's so big. Polymer clay can do that, but polymer clay also uh, changes in the oven. It sometimes gets smaller or bigger. I, I don't know which, but the size changes. So this is great because it's completely flat and it's like so customized to whatever you lay it on. And it's like totally on there, super, super solid. Overall, as I said, I'm super happy with this clay and I really do think it will open other doors for upcycling as I start to think of, you know, problem solving. Oh shoot, I don't have the structure for this, but I can use this clay and it'll dry really hard and stick to whatever I'm working on. So I will definitely be using this again for upcycles. I'll link the clay I bought below. Again, this is not sponsored, but I, I do recommend trying it out if you're into upcycling or if you're into art, or I think the main thing it's used for is repair or cosplay too. I love following cosplay people because they have so many amazing tips and I feel like I heard about this clay via a cosplay person. I'm not into cosplay myself, but I love all of the innovative ideas that a lot of cosplayers have. So all my respect to the cosplay community. If you have made it this far, wow, thank you so much for sitting through my rambling. I hope you found it informative. Thank you so, so much for watching and happy making.